What up, brothers? It's time to get back at this Subaru. If you guys watched the first one, we're gonna be taking this front cover apart because we don't know if these sprockets are right. So we're gonna get in on this project, see what she's all about. So what we gotta do here is pull the front drive off it. I don't think we're gonna have to pull the AC or the alternator. I think I'll be able to wiggle the front cover out without it. But I do gotta get the top hose off. These fans are gonna have to come off, washer bottle, and obviously the belt and the tensioner that's in the way down there. Uh, we will have to pull the front crank pulley off though to get the front cover. So this one's got a little slider in it. So all you have to do is break that bolt loose and take that off and then it comes off. Good old banana juice. <laughs> so once you break that tensioner bolt loose, for the pulley itself, down in there, that bolt right there, mm -hmm. that rusty crusty one. Then you gotta get on this bolt up on top of the tension here, behind, yeah, right there. And it's reverse threads, so in order to bring the pulley up, it, you actually gotta t put in the reverse rotation, and it pulls the pulley up that way. It releases the belt. And then same thing with the power steering belt. You gotta release this bolt here so that it breaks free, and then same thing with this top bolt here. And they're pretty easy to tell. One's a four rib, one's a or one's a five rib, one's a four rib. AC is the four rib, as you can tell on the pulley itself. If you guys know about these crappy clamps, they tend to when they get rusty. They don't want to actually come off, and they just want to twist. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this and replace it with some a, a regular hose clamp. Watch as he cuts the hose. Nah, I gotta cut no hose. Oh, I'm surprised that came off. If you guys have ever experienced any kind of bolts in a radiator, a plastic radiator, a lot of times they like to not come out or break something. But today we're getting, oh, hold on, I got one more to do. Oh, we're getting lucky today, boys. Oh, yeah. So get this washer bottle off. See this little tab right here? You push this in, and it comes out that way, and then you pull it that way. Real simple, and then there's another bolt right here to get the fans off. Don't forget to unplug your fans. They're all the way down in each corner. The tough parts, they're a little corroded. So I had to use this 90 degree long needle nose, which works wonders by being able to compress the clip. And then I had to pry it apart with a long screwdriver to actually get them apart. That was the easiest way to do it. If you don't have that, I'll put uh, some nice ones in the description below so you can see what they look like. Getting this fan plug out, I had to pull the, the uh, power steering reservoir off. This one's really simple. It slides in here, like so, and the way you get it off is this tang here. Come over here a little bit with the camera. This tang here, and you just push it back, and then you can slide the whole bottle up as soon as I have two hands. And then it comes up like that, and then it just moves just a little bit out of the way so I can get in there. And then what I gotta do here, I'm gonna use a little boy. Oh, look at there. Spread it open a little bit. Now I can take the bigger one. Get in there. You gotta measure the inside. Oh, well, it's pretty much out. I can just pull it apart now. Bingo! Alright, now the rad fan is ready to come out. And that's the good thing about this, too, is they come out in two pieces. So you got one side. Measurement comes out. And the other one comes out. And that should give us enough room to get in here and pull this front cover and wiggle it out. But if we have to, we may have to pull the rad, but it's really simple. All we gotta do is pull these two. It's manual, so there's no cooler lines or anything. We just gotta pull the bottom hose if we have to, but hopefully we won't have to. So it's a 22 millimeter socket, and the best way to do this, if you can't physically do it, um, because you know you would need a special tool to hold on to the balancer, you know, Subaru tells you to do it that way. But a nice way to do it is put a long, uh, ratchet if you don't have one long enough to reach the frame 
You can use a ratchet with like a pipe on it and get into the frame here. Make sure it's laying on the frame, you're not pinching any wires or anything. And then you just crank the motor through and it breaks the bolt loose. Well, we missed the whole breaking loose thing, but you get the idea. It cranks through, it was a little lazy, but you just hold the starter and it broke loose. And now I can just wheel this bad boy out. I hope it'll be something simple like that. Maybe it's just out of time. But anyway, now it's time to get the front cover off. Just see all these little 10 millimeter bolts all the way around, pretty simple. You just gotta find them all. They're hiding under there. But yeah, we're gonna get them. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, the outer covers for both the cams, brackets, those have to come off first, and they take these long bolts. So when going back together, just pay attention to that. You have just these long bolts. Then the center cover comes off last, and it has these shouldered bolts. So they are different. And then you have this one hiding, might catch you a little bit, the one in the center on the left cover over here on the, or if you're talking inside the car, the right side of the engine. See it right there. And you can see it there. It actually broke the insert out of it. So I'm not gonna be able to put that one back in, but that is the bolt. You gotta get that one too to pull that cover off. Now, just kind of looking at it, it looks like the sprockets are correct. Cause I might have to look at it again, but they were talking about how it has only like a couple teeth, but this one you can see that there's a bunch of teeth on it. Yeah. All right, so if you look at this video I'm using from YouTube, this is a good one that tells you everything you need to swap over. Now the sprocket, the small sprocket on the bottom is the USD one, which obviously as you saw earlier, that's the one we have on there, because the JDM one only has about you know six of those marks on there. I can't tell with the cam sprocket just because it's on the back side of the sprocket and I can't, I have to take it off to find out. But just seeing that the crank was replaced kind of tells me most likely that one got swapped as well and that we're definitely having a different issue than sprocket issue as far as the crank signal and whatnot. So next thing I'm gonna do is check timing, make sure that it's actually in timing because if it's not in timing, it definitely won't fire either. Guys, I think you figured it out. It may not be the actual problem, but check this out. So we got it at top dead center now. Everything does line up, so it's definitely in time. You look closely at the sprocket down there. It lost a tooth. It's like a little baby child losing a tooth. So that'll definitely cause some issues. So either way, whether it's something else or not, that has to get swapped because that sprocket is not gonna read correctly. So either way, we gotta swap that out. So what I'm gonna do is take the front of the part of the silver car and put this sprocket on here and put it back together and see what happens. It's a new day. I wasn't able to get everything accomplished when I wanted to on the other day, but we're back at it now. So I'm gonna be pulling this timing belt off. So I forgot to mention the crank sprocket. There's a mark on that I just marked in yellow and that faces straight up when everything is in time. And the pulley gear or the, the keyway is on the bottom. You can't see it, but if you feel under here, the key's sitting in there straight down. So the only task I really have to do is get that can, uh, crank sprocket off. So what I'm gonna do is start breaking loose and getting the easiest pulleys off. This one down here has the least amount of tension on it. So I'm gonna pull that first and get tension off this belt and then pull other ones as I need it to. The tensioner I will have to pull off because I have to recompress that so that I can set it later and I'll show you guys that. All right, so pretty easy. All I did was remove the, the cover on the top. I moved, removed the bottom pulley like I was talking about and just this top one and I was able to get everything off. And now this sprocket just slides right off like so, real simple. And now you can just get a better look at the tooth that was broken. Where is it? Look at that missing tooth. Oh my goodness, what are we supposed to do about that? Luckily I have another car here that's got the same sprocket on it. So now I'm gonna swap them out. Hopefully that is all the issue that I'm having because if that's the case, we got a running car. I just gotta pull the other one apart and reassemble this. I'm obviously not gonna show you pulling the other car apart because I just showed you this one. So we'll get to that and then I'll show you me throwing it all back together. All right, fellas. So getting this sprocket off of this car, definitely a little more difficult. The thing pretty much fell off the other one. This one has some corrosion. I mean, not corrosion, but just a little extra cheese on the snout there. So I really had to work it with, I was using this some, um, whoa. I was using this guy and this guy for the first little bit to get behind it. 
and then I had to use like an angled crowbar, but I had to be ever so gentle just because seeing what the other one did probably had the same problem I just had and got too aggressive and popped one of those teeth off. So I was just being really ginger about it and really careful. And now I've used a little scotch Bright now that I got it off doing the inside of the sprocket and I'm gonna do it on the new one too so it just slides on and I don't have any big issues with that. But other than that, it was pretty easy getting it off. We're gonna get this tensioner compressed so that we can reset it and put it back in the car. Now they specifically say do not put it in a horizontal press, not sideways when you're pressing it back together in order to set the pin. They want you to do it on a vertical press. So what I'm gonna do is put it in our press here and put some stuff, rig some stuff together so I can actually press this in. And then I'm just gonna use a piece of stainless steel wire. It should be strong enough to hold it. I mean, if not, then I'll find something else, but we'll see as we go. So other than the things I said as well, they also want you to compress the thing and take about a three minute window to actually com fully compress it, um, assuming just so that you don't blow out any of the seals on the thing, because if it's too much pressure too quickly. So here I am gonna slowly, slowly compress it and take about three minutes. All right, so now you can see I got it in there, compressed, and I have the pin all the way through. Uh, I'm not gonna show the back side. I'll do it when I pull it off. But uh, we're gonna find out if this welding wire is gonna hold it up or not. And then the jams are all Yeah, exactly. I remember almost biting Oh, oh, wow. Well, considering that it's bent up like that, I doubt it's gonna work. I need something heavier duty. All right, so since the wire's not gonna work, we're changing the punches here. I got an assortment of these boys, and I just did it now, got it in there. I don't really like to use these as much, but it's the only thing that's strong enough that'll hold the pin down. In the meantime, and it'll be easier to just remove it later, so that's gonna work this time. Yeah, so you can still see it's still bending it pretty good, which is why I don't like using these as much. But since this is my option here, that's what I'm gonna use. All right, got the sprocket on, got the tensioner in there, all the idlers back in. The, uh, the process, I put this in first, then this one is the most difficult just because of the way it's so tight in the routing. And then this one was a little bit of a fight. I just had to make sure I was in the hole first and then really push, pull up on it and thread it in to make sure it was actually in there. It wasn't cross threaded or anything. But now all my marks are still lined up like they should be. You can see on the crank and on the cams. So now I'm ready to pull this pin and she's going to get tight. One thing I noticed now that I have it all together is the belt just seems really sloppy, but yet up here where the tensioner is, it's nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do before I start it, cause I just wanna make sure this thing doesn't skip a tooth, I'm gonna run it through by hand and see if it'll tighten up this lower section here because I don't like seeing that. And I wanna make sure that we don't have any issues with this. So I'm gonna do it by hand before I actually try and start it. All right, so now that I rolled it through a whole rotation, the bottom of the belt here is nice and tight. So is the rest of it too. So just wanna make sure that was good. Now we can start it and see if she gonna do it for us. All right, so we're ready to try this thing out. Got my assistant, Lamar, if you guys remember him from his video. And he's gonna fire this thing up. Go ahead, let her rip. Let you Just be ready to shut it off if it needs to. You gotta push it in, dude, to the floor. Oh, she's a fire. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. A little dry on the wheel for quite some time. Yeah. Sweet, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my God. So that's all it was guys, just a little crank, sprocket, and uh, I know I'm low on coolant, so go ahead and shut it off. But hell yeah, we got her running, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna put this thing together and get this thing on the road. Dude, super pumped this thing starts. So now all I gotta do is put the front drive back together, put the covers and this front drive. Simple stuff, I'm sure you guys don't really care to watch that, uh, so I'm just gonna put it together. But that goes to show you that a simple problem could cause a big issue as far as just a tooth on the sprocket. Especially when somebody's thinking it's a computer. Um, you know, don't always believe everything people tell you because this was a pretty cheap fix and honestly the guy could have had a good car if he had just dug in a little further and figured it out. So when it comes to putting the balancer on, it's uh, 40, 45 foot pounds roughly. Best way, or there's a couple different ways, obviously the Subaru specific tool, which we don't have, or a strap wrench going around the pulley is a really nice way. Uh, I've used these belts and kind of used a crowbar combination to make a strap wrench, which works sometimes. 
not working in this application so luckily the bouncer has two big holes in there they're not threaded so I just have these bolts in here like that and then I'm just holding it with a crowbar like this while I tighten the bolt to get some tension on it and that's that work to get this all together alrighty so we got the front drive all together coolant bottles on it just filling up the Asian freeze just to make sure it's full now I'm gonna run it and actually let it get a heat cycle before I go drive it or anything just because it's been such a long time without it being together all right so finally took this thing for a drive and this thing feels pretty good um, problem though it's throwing a check engine light for system or a lean bank on bank one so we're definitely gonna have to fix that before it goes through emissions and all but you know I kind of expected some issues once I got it started but at least now it runs it drives pretty well but that is it for today fellas so let me know what you think like subscribe you know all the jazz and uh, as we go through this and keep putting keep doing other things to make this thing run better and swapping other things from the silver one because a lot of that stuff I want to put on here as far as all that STI stuff the bigger turbo uh, maybe put the cluster in this thing all that good stuff so stay tuned man I'll see you guys next time